Welcome to the League of Kings podcast. Meet your hosts, Willie, J. Dot, Big Brother, and Joe. Join these four distinct voices in insightful discussions about society and culture. Get ready for captivating content, camaraderie, and guaranteed laughter. Sit back, enjoy the show, and remember to like, share, and subscribe for an exciting journey ahead. Uh, yeah, kings and queens, welcome back to the League of Kings podcast. I am Willie, the habitual line stepper, one of the hosts of the show. And as usual, I am joined by three dope individuals. Resident Big Brother, how you doing, King? Hey, Will. Good, good here. Good to see everybody. How's everyone? How are you, Will? I'm good, brother. I am good. J Dot, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm maintaining. Can't complain. But yeah, happy to be back with the league. See what we get into today. Okay. Joe, how we doing, brother? Doing great. Uh hopefully everybody else is doing amazing and uh, ready to rock. <laughs> Why was that funny, Will? Why was that funny? He can't even get himself together. See what you did, Joe. <laughs> I'll try to get myself together. Hey, Joe, did you change hats? Huh? Did you change hats? Heads? Yeah, yeah, he did change hats. Oh, yeah. I couldn't find my hat. It's un- the other one's uncomfortable. And I, okay. I I couldn't find it, so I looked back, and I was like, oh, there it is. And this one's more comfortable with my uh, with my headphones on. Gotcha. I gotcha. I just thought I was tripping. Uh, how's, how's everybody's mental health? How you, how's your mental health, Big Brother? Uh, doing well, doing well, maintaining. How's yours? It's good. It's good. I'm doing well, man. Thanks for asking, Joe. How's your mental health? It's good, man. It's good. So far, everything's uh, just a lot of work, but other than that, doing pretty good. Okay, you that. I'm hanging in there, man. I'm hanging in there. Tough times, but you know, we tough people, so we make it. Question, Jay Dot. With the holidays coming, and with your girlfriend, <laughs> any kind of any kind of gifts, you know, you 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 ain't gotta you ain't gotta say it, but are you thinking about something? I did. I definitely had some things in my. I think I'm a pretty good gift giver. I take pride in that. It's not a thought put into gifts. They're not your typical things. I think I, I know how to make a memory. So I got, I got some things in my. I could. Once the gift is delivered, I'll, I'll give the, the audience some tips on appropriate gift giving because I think I'm, I'm okay. dope at it. Okay. So let me, let me ask y'all something. I want to get on, on, a, on a relationship tip real quick. Big brother, what, what would be your ideal of trying to like set the scene for a female, for a queen? Like how how would you go out loud, as far as like you know, first time over or you know, are you like a big flowers, candle, you know, some music, the serenade? I know you can't cook, but I'm just saying, what 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 do you? How does Big Brother roll? Well, as far as like the first time coming over yeah. to my place, yeah. um. It depends what the event is. Like, it's just like, hey, the first time over and we I just want you to see it or this is the actual date. I want you, of course, have it spotless. I am a flower person. So if she's into flowers, I would make sure that's there. And I would just want her to just see the, you know, see my space as is because I want her to get to know me, you know, not the courting ambassador me. So just see it as is. You know, I'm a like I'm a I'm a minimalist, so my house is just very minimal, no pictures and everything like that. So my house is pretty tidy. So yeah, dim lights, flowers, you know. True, I cannot cook, but I can definitely order. So food would be delivered. Yeah. What kind of music? What kind of music? Who 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 you playing to set the mood? 
Um, I think I'll probably put on, I have a focus playlist where it's just a lot of, you know, instrumentals and things like that, even hip hop instrumentals, you know, and just have that on shuffle and probably order three different types of meals just so we can have a variety. Yeah. You know, three different sit out, types sit of out on the deck, you know, and just have a conversation. Yeah. He's, he's single. He has that kind of money to where he can have three type of meal. Yeah. yeah three. Uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know you know you know sometimes you want to do that you want you know if you know her favorite foods you get all three so she can sample all you know desserts get two different desserts you know plan dessert out on the deck and then just that type of thing okay what about you jay dot setting the mood i mean I'm, I'm with big brother i'm a flowers person uh, you know, I don't drink, so I I probably pick out a nice tea, or something like that. I don't know about all these multiple meals, big bro. I, I asking for too much at that point. Uh, yeah, I think I yeah, sitting out on the on the patio or something, you know. Enjoy music, music. Uh, what would I do for music? That's that's a good one. I don't know if it needs to be instrumental, or if I actually want to play some R and B, but uh. That is that is a good one. I might go like, I like I'm a Carl Thomas type mm. of dude. Carl Thomas, Maxwell, maybe, you know, mm. something mellow. I'm a neo soul kind of dude. Maybe oh, some yeah. D'Angelo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Feel do you do y'all feel like Tank would be a little bit too aggressive? Too Man, aggressive. Some t- yes. Yeah, too aggressive. It's too aggressive. Wants to hear that. <laughs> and he say some questionable things from time to time. Like mm. Tank and Usher, I'm, I would avoid because Usher. We're not trading places. We're not doing that. None of that. I'm just, that's me. I'm sorry. That I'm you wouldn't want her to take you on a date? I would I would love to be taken on a date. Not in the way that he described, though. That's, right. we, we crossed a whole lot of lines in that song, and I don't understand why everybody's comfortable with it, but it's, it is. It is. It is. I do. I, I like that song. Joe, what about you? Yeah. Um, some uh, I I like the patio idea with the string lights, um, not not too bright, just dim dim lighting. You know, um, I would I would cook some uh, some steak, and uh, some I have a steak, I cook her a steak, and then a uh, some asparagus, uh, mm. some, you know, some veggies stuff like that, um, with some wine. Have some wine. Music would be uh, some Tupac. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Hit him up. Wait. Go, right, toss Brother it up. B. Toss it up. I, there we go. <laughs> see him crip walking the food to the table. Oh, so, some dub C, you, you know. know you just met me. You won't let me. If I couldn't have it, silly rabbit. Well, nah, I'm not. Right. Um, no, I, I would have... Um, I like coffee. I like the playlist, the coffee house music um, on Spotify. Mm, I put good. a coffee house and I, I put that on. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of like, uh, some of it is acoustic, uh, some, you know, different cover bands and just uh, nothing too crazy. Cause you know, when you try to bring somebody over for the first time or something like that, you don't know if they like what, what kind of music you like. So having some variety, um, but yeah, I mean, the flowers, I like flowers. I, I don't know if I would, have flowers on the to me flowers is more mainly like giving them out flowers like in a when you're dating so i wouldn't have any flowers there or rose petals in the bed or any weird stuff like that yet you know but it's it's weird no what do you mean no like for me to have my own flowers in my own in my own apartment or house i don't know like like romantic flowers First of all, let's let's kill the myth of these rose petal things. Do people understand how rose petals will stain the fuck out of anything you leave them on? You put rose petals on your bed, buy new sheets. And they not stink. coming out. And roses do stink. Yeah, I don't yeah, like that. That's for the movies and and romance novels and shit like that. Don't Yeah. Well get the fake ones. Get some fake do they have just fake rose petals, silk rose petals? Uh they probably. do. Yeah. I've I have i have actually used those before, the fake ones. And they're easier to clean up. Hmm. I think they even have edible ones too. Hmm. Hmm. I think rose roses are edible. 
It's an edible fly. I believe it. Don't do it. Don't try it. Don't say no, it. No, I say it. Eat a rose <laughs> and then go. Ahead and try it. Right. Just, yeah. Man. That's oh. Uh, Joe, you kind of threw me out. <laughs> so you want you want like keep flowers in your house? Like to help? The, no, the, no, just the smell, the color. Uh, no, no. I mean, I, I would have maybe like the smell would be. Uh, I, I I would like it to smell kind of like apple ish, cinnamon smell. Potpourri ish. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you smell with the potpourris. No, I mean, there's there's different kinds though. You know, there's ones that are like they smell like really bad. Like if uh, they're just too strong. I like just like the subtle. Uh, I just I want it to smell clean, but also have a a distinct smell, right? So it just doesn't smell like Clorox. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. No, I get I, it. I, I feel like you would have like this old school remedy where you would have like <laughs> some cinnamon, like cinnamon sticks. And something on the stove, like slowly simmering to, to give off. <laughs> How did you know it's that? Cloves, it's all spice. Yeah, like that in there. we do that. Yeah. We that's that that is when that that is what we call the um, that is the broke. I can't get any any candles. I I will put this <laughs> the cinnamon sticks. That's the, that's the struggle candle right there. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that that is burn sage. Yeah. Let me also offer this piece of advice, Joe, because when well, you married, so you don't need it. But I don't know about the asparagus either, because one of y'all gonna have to go to the bathroom at some point. <laughs> and, bad. Yeah, I'm just. That's just, true. For the listeners, don't, don't do it. <laughs> I think yeah, I'm doing a lot of work to have somebody come over. Just order. Hey, brother, you, you 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 refuse to cook for anything. You want the brisket <laughs> shipped. He gonna order three different meals. He ain't cooking a damn thing. <laughs> but just imagine, you know, because like if you are really trying to get to know her, and you know her meals, it's like, look, I just wanted you to have a variety. Of, you know, just in case, you know, just whatever you had the taste for tonight. So what are you doing with the extra food? Letting her take it home. So she's just walking out with just like oh, flowers, know. take out you... containers, the whole. <laughs> <laughs> but not letting her take all that food home. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. It's the same night or the next morning? Mm. Come on. With I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, and gen- ladies and gentlemen, the ne- you know, the same night. It's her first time over. <laughs> one, one of those meals I... is breakfast. Yeah, we're going to heat up this steak with some eggs in the morning. Don't worry about it. It, it could have been chicken. No, and then y'all hit chicken and eggs or chicken and waffles the next morning. You know? Ooh, man, that sounds good. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like like you said, uh, I'm I'm married, but I know I try to do on certain occasions, like I have like the candles. Like I've gotten like the um the candles that float in water. Get those, you know what I'm saying, set it up, get the flowers, you know, here and there, have candles, try to have candles in every other room, uh, cooking, yeah, definitely got to have, if it's not like a steak, then some type of uh, seafood, seafood uh, dish. And then de- definitely got to have some type of dessert. So I'll probably if I don't if I don't buy it, I'll probably whip up something. Music. I'm I'm definitely a Neo so head too. So it 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 it'll it, it probably start out. I wouldn't do the tank. But it might be semi aggressive. It might be it might be it might be semi aggressive. Like I might try to like do some sneaky shit, like find like some uh, DJ Screw Webby. Give me that. Hey, wow, where, wow. where it's wow. like, like, like is, is that is he saying like yeah, it's screwed up? You know, I would do like some sneaky shit, like yeah, just to kind of aggressively set the movement. You know what I mean? I thought you but, were gonna go like maybe H Town or Color Me Bad or something like that. I want to sex you some up. R Kelly with some Biggie Smalls. No, we we don't do R Kelly. <laughs> no, I'm just. I don't. Oh no! Teacher's see, on. Teacher's on. At, at that point, I would just. I, it it would be Joe to see. 
Jodeci. I see. You no, know say you would just know some Jodeci, something like that. Um, trying to think of somebody else. Uh, some some one twelve. You know what I mean? That kind of picks you more like a Maxwell person. I'm a little bit of everything. I'm a little of everything. I, I I've had some Maxwell, but like I said, you but you gotta have a little bit of aggressiveness, mm, aggressiveness I, I, up, up I can in there. From Willie, Willie mm. probably got a, a pair of Tims by the bed. Like he he gonna change shoes just right before the moment, just so you know mm. what's about to happen. Mm. I can see. Yeah, we'll, we'll be calling that. us like she left. I, I don't know why she left. I'm like you don't know why this woman left. <laughs> and and my Tim and my Tims are peanut butter color. Mm. <laughs> with the therm with the thermal socks. I got you. Thermal socks, yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't want slip. <laughs> oh. All right. Let's get to it, y'all. So Joe, this is actually your um your your lead, my man. You wanna go ahead and take this one? Yeah, yeah. So question for all you guys. Um you guys know that I'm all into some weird stuff once in a while in the in the podcast and the show. And uh, do you believe uh, that there's more life outside this world? Do you believe that is it just us or there's more? It doesn't matter what it is, you know, if it's aliens or whatever you believe in. But do you think there's something else out there? Start out with, uh, go ahead, J. Dot. Man, uh, I, it's two sides of it to me. Like the the religious side to me says, like we were we were created purposefully, and that you know, like it was, it was a, we're here for a reason, kind of you know to to be in God's image. And so I don't know that He went and did it again someplace else. But then if you look at it, what I'm thinking like logically and scientifically, just the vastness of the universe, and if we if life was created here by some you know random set of events it'd be hard to believe that that the the dice didn't roll that way somewhere else in the universe so i'm kind of torn between the two things i probably lean more to the scientific where we'd be naive to think that this is the only spot ever in all of the vastness of space where life happened but uh yeah i i understand like the argument both ways for me yeah i think the same way what do you think big bro Oh, I definitely think there's life outside of here. I mean, it might not be in a form that we would think it would be in, but yeah, the like Jada said, this this universe is just so extensive. Like you'd be like to me, I would think you would be kind of naive not to think that there's some other type of life form out there. Do I want it to come here? No, I do not. <laughs> How about you, Will? I know you have something. Let it rip. I like how you intentionally saved me for last. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I lo- love you too. Bro. I know I, you do this to me every time. Like you intentionally, like you have this like one of these questions and like you intentionally go around me <laughs> and save me for last. That's cool. Uh, well, I've got, I've currently been reading up on Sumerians and the Anunnaki. You know anything about that, Joe? No. That is too woke. That's, that's too woke for you, right there, ain't it? I just I, I, it was I, coming from a book. I knew there was a book involved mm-hmm. in here somewhere. I knew mm-hmm. that, sir. Yes. Yeah. I think there is. I think there is. I I think. There is a perceive that there there's just one, and I think there's a lot of confusion. That some people on one hand think it's God, and then you got some people on the other hand think that it's aliens. <laughs> Excuse me. Where it might just be a chance that they're actually, they're actually one and the same thing. There's a chance. I'm not going to get into my whole book, reading conspiracies and, you know, thought process behind it. But my answer is yes. And I feel like, and I, and I, (laughs) and I, 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 I feel like we're, 
we're the small pieces of a bigger game. Humans. We're, I, I feel like we're just a very small piece of, of a bigger game. I only say that, Will, because I, I worry about you. <laughs> and if you come on this show and get too close to the truth, they're going to snatch you. And I just don't want you to disappear on us. And we think it's just you had a gummy episode, but you really got snatched. I just, that's all I'm worried about. That's all I'm worried hey, about. Hey, it's so crazy. I can't even talk to nobody about this shit. <laughs> because, I, because out of out of anybody, I thought it'd be Joe because of his, his alien journey. But when I said the Sumerians and Yunaki, he kind of stared at me. He's like, what? And I was like, yeah. This is not it. Never, <laughs> never heard, never this, heard of that. But you have it. But I'm learning things about all this stuff every day. You know, like all this crazy stuff that's out there that you know that people don't know, and that's mm -hmm. that's interesting. I've actually, I've I've learned some stuff that that's actually uh, that's actually like taking place. In uh, South America and in Mexico, uh, there are some some authors that 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 has done some research. So some of it actually has started like in South America and it's kind of made its way around. But like I said, I I can go oh oh it'd be a whole nother episode of this. Yeah, that's good. yeah. It's it's interesting, you know what I mean? And that, and like I said, people don't know. I didn't know half the shit that I know now. Still, I started actually researching more stuff. You know, I was like, "What the hell is all this stuff?" You know, and um, which is crazy. You know what I mean? And the more you dig, the more stuff you have, you find out, and you're like, "Damn!" Like you're just confused, you know, because there's just so much information out there. You remember? You remember you you posted something? It was. I think it was an episode. Maybe it was the first one, the first alien one. I think. Mm -hmm. And you had asked a question, and I think, and I responded, <clears throat> and I was saying, and I think I responded by saying that they intentionally put out the information because they know that the way that our thought process is 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 either going to be either you believe or you don't believe. So they intentionally put out information and they intentionally put out so much information. You're not really going to know what's true and not true. Right. Right. There's no way. I mean, as much research that I do, I have just as many questions now, <laughs> you know, so that, that it's, it, it's just, there's no way. That's true. Well, you don't know what to believe now anymore anyways. There's just so much stuff that people can create and make and videos and uh, with all the technology and stuff now. And I mean, it's, you know, we're just, we just got to keep reading, I guess. And Yeah. I'll, um, I'll send you that book. Okay. It's actually on Audible for free. Oh, sweet. It's, it's a, I think it was free and I've, I've read, I've already read it. I'm going on my third time. Okay. But you you can get it done in a a day. Okay. If you if you see my Audible, mm. I bury right now. I got shit on quantum physics that I'm about to read. Damn. That stuff is hard though, man. You know, yeah. I tried reading that uh that guy. What's that guy on the that dude on the wheelchair that had the little microphone thing? Stephen Hawking. Hawking. <laughs> HR, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going, but HR, you make sure you tag that. Uh, <laughs> Joe, Steven. you have been hot these last two episodes. We're gonna have to not the not the Stephen Hawkins. Yeah, <laughs> I um, I found this. Uh, I was at a yard sale and I found this uh, lady that sold this whole collection of his stuff. Right. So I'm like, damn, I really need to get all these books. So I got these books and I couldn't read any of this shit, man. I was like, what the hell? So I just sold them. I was like, this is hard. This is for somebody that's really like that understands the process of everything. And I just, I like this movie. That's about it. I, I like the fact 
Yeah. I say I'm a habitual line stepper, but let's be honest. <laughs> it's not really me. Hey, J Dot, do you know who the guy in the wheelchair is? J Dot. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, hey J Dot, it's the guy in the Setup. wheelchair with the little microphone thing that talks like a robot. It's the little microphone thing. <laughs> oh, Stephen Hawking. Yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> got the two but black guys. But it's the descriptive, the little <laughs> microphone. Yeah, but I knew exactly who he was talking about, though. Yeah, it's a very good description, Joe. Don't let him get you. I, I knew exactly who you were talking about. <laughs> It wasn't like it was Christopher Reeves, you know. What I mean, he he didn't he didn't write a book. But I don't, Jay, I don't think it was a microphone because the man used the the thing to talk for him. Oh yeah, yeah, That's the, not, the robot was, voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. He said the robot you voice. Right. <laughs> but hey, everyone, Joe had to take two weeks off due to audience. <laughs> so moving, moving on. Let you get some, get something else. Up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in this week's health health is wealth segment, Jay Dot, go ahead, take it away. He will can't even get. Uh, it. <laughs> yeah, this is not. I'm not doing a very good health and health is wealth right now. I'm out of breath and uh, <laughs> trying to catch my breath from running up them steps. Anyway, All right. so my health is okay. in in the uh, in the best shape. But no, I th- this week I wanted to talk uh, anxiety attacks in stress management um just the importance of do people understand like what anxiety is because i hear a lot of people talk about anxiety these days and it's like everybody has it and um i don't think people necessarily understand the difference between anxiety and like anxiety disorder which are two completely different things i've been diagnosed with anxiety i feel like every week i'm gonna be like i've been diagnosed with a different thing but yeah i have my mental health is not superb you know it's uh mm-hmm. i deal with stuff but just for you guys like what's your understanding of anxiety and maybe what are some things you do in your life to manage that or stress that i'll start with you big brother because I, I feel like you have something dope to say <clears throat> excuse me um my first experience with anxiety like i didn't even know what it was i, I just know i just knew I would be anxious a lot of times, but I think the first known, like where I could say I'm having an anxiety attack was during, I would say about the third and a half, fourth month of uh, lockdown during COVID. And with all that heavy news cycle and everything that was going on to me, it, it just, it was like a ricochet of emotions. It just like, and I just, when I say it was like a full blown anxiety attack to the point where this, it was the first time I had to actually sit still and pull it together and go like walk through the full anxiety attack. So to, I can honestly say I have had two major anxiety attacks and I think it's good that we learn what they are learn the managing tools and know that you're not the only one who may be dealing with that. And I think it's important with the stress management and this health and wealth session is because when you start to read and realize how much stress can affect your health and your life and how many people die from stress related issues, you'll start to work on that so your health is not impaired impaired by it but yeah i like to me even talking about that anxiety attack that first one we're in lockdown and i'm i'm just i didn't feel like i was losing my mind but it i promise you it just felt like the way you see a bullet ricochet it just felt like my emotions were ricocheting one after another i think that anxiety attack lasts for about a good 20 minutes and I just thank the Lord that, you know, I was able to walk, uh, work through it because it it was, it was bad. You know, your first one and you realize what's happening. Yeah. I can see that. I can definitely see that. Uh, I don't want to leave Will for last this time. I don't want him to feel special about this. I'm going to ask him now. Will, uh, (laughs) what's the woke perspective on it? I'm just messing with you. Will, (laughs) what do you think about anxiety? 
and anxiety versus anxiety disorder and maybe what are the things you do in your life to manage it? Well, the work perspective, the um, great Elijah Farrakhan. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have laughed right there. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, it's fun. It, it's crazy because I, I have been talking to Fee about this place few months, something that I was noticing about myself, like when we would go to like big events, like concerts, something that has like a lot of people in like a um, closed in area. Like I always find myself, I'm always looking for the exit. I'm, I, I spend more time checking my surroundings than I do looking at the performance. And I'm like, I wonder if it's like me, if that's me having some type of anxiety about my surroundings. So that was kind of like one thing that I was, excuse me, that I wanted to get into therapy about. To try to figure out, is this what this is? I'm trying to pinpoint why I have these feelings. Why do I feel on the edge, you know, when we're doing stuff? Or, hell, it can be... Hey, you want to go to a concert or whatever? It can be too much from now. And the whole time, that's all I can think about. Damn, I got to go to this concert. I got to do this. I got to do that. You know, I, I have all these things I'm trying to figure out in my mind all the way up to that point to where I'm like literally mentally exhausted. So like when I, by the time, by the time we get there, it's like, dude, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm so I'm so mentally exhausted from thinking about this and that, and then I'm, I'm like I said, I'm looking at this guy. He keeps getting up. Why he keep getting up like this? How many beers he's gonna drink? You know what I'm saying? Or just I, I'm I, it's just it's too many scenarios. I'm trying to play out, and then I'm missing the concert. Yeah. So, you know, that's the conversation that I had with V, and she's like, yeah, she's like, now that you said, she said. I, it's making sense why you don't like to go to big events because I'm never comfortable. I can't get comfortable. So, like I said, I, I've been, I'm still trying to work on getting to a therapist because I feel like I may have some type of anxiety. I just yeah, don't know what it is. So, I, I can't say that I have anxiety, but I feel. I feel like there's something there's something chemically going on with me when I get around big settings. And like we've talked about before, like I think that's an important step for people. If, if you're starting to feel something and you and you don't know how to identify it, you know, go talk to somebody to help you identify that thing. Because once you mm -hmm. talking to somebody is probably not going to take away the anxiety, but once you know why it's happening or, you know, what's happening when it happens, it can help you manage it a little mm -hmm. different. You know, when, you, when you're feeling anxiety and you're not sure why, like that's, that's a whole different experience. When you're feeling it and you know it may be irrational or, you know, this is just your normal response, sometimes you can, you know, push that, push that to the side or function regardless of how you feel. But when you don't know, it can sometimes be debilitating. Joe, for you, what's, what's, uh, what's your experience with anxiety and, and how do you manage it? I don't, uh, I don't have a whole lot of that. Um, what I do is I just stay busy and I think that's helped me out through the hard times, um, uh, and you know, difficult, you know, regular life stuff. Uh, but I don't, um, I don't really suffer from any of that. I, I just put everything where, okay, this is how it's going to be. And, and I just ride with it. Right. And uh, I try to tell myself, Hey, we got to stay positive. We got to keep going, figure something out. But I have a lot of stuff that I do to keep my mind busy, uh, to, to help me out. If there's anything ever happening, I have something to go to. So, I mean, I do a lot of different things from learning how to play the guitar to video games, to hiking, you know, hunting, uh, camping, riding mountain bikes. I mean, I have all kinds of different things. So I keep myself busy. And I think that's the most important thing when it comes to, um, because my wife suffers from anxiety and, and stress and stuff like that. 
And I'm super stress free, man. I can just be like, all right, let's just roll with this. And I find something to, I find something that I can get out of it, and and it doesn't affect me. But my wife is is she's she gets super anxious and she freaks out and she comes to a stop, right? And one thing that I've been trying to tell her is is you gotta have hobbies. You gotta have other things that you can keep your mind occupied when you're you're feeling down or something's going on. Read a book. Read, do something that that gets you to to think differently right to kind of suppress a little bit of it um and you know it it kind of seems to work right for her so i i since i'm very active um and i take her wherever i go right so she's like she might be feeling anxious but then after a little bit she's like oh man i feel great now you know we could just be out there mountain bike riding you know and she's like i feel i feel way better now i was super stressed out and or super anxious i had a lot of anxiety and so you know, I think a lot of it is to try to get you to to not think of that, think positive, and and just keep your mind occupied, right? Your your brain is super powerful when it comes to this type of stuff. It, you can you can make yourself sick if you really wanted to, you know. And so that's basically what I do. You know, have I gone through some stressful stuff? I used to work nights. I was a mechanic working nights, and I cannot sleep during the day. Just can't. And uh, I ended up getting sick, too. I had to go to a different doctors, and they were trying to prescribe me antidepressants and all this kinds of stuff. And um, what I did is I quit my job, and I went to work regular shift. And uh, it took about two, three years to, so I can feel a little bit better. But uh, I got out of it. But I just can't sleep. I don't, I don't nap. I don't do anything, man. I'm always on the go. Since the moment I get up, I'm like, I don't stop. So a question, I have a question. So it is the suppressing, isn't that actually kind of unhealthy? When you suppressing those type of things, instead of you trying to figure out or dealing with it? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I figure I, and whenever there's a situation like that, I don't let it get to where I'm going to be anxious. I find a solution for it and uh, I can fix it or I can't fix it. Or hey, this is in the past. I need to move on, and I do. I need. I need to. I need to, I need to be better. Or, you know, and and I take it right there and then, and I move on from it. That's it's always worked for me. You know, if there's anything that's uh, coming up and it's a stressful situation, I okay. What am I gonna do with this? Um, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Find a solution for it, and uh, and then just move on from it. But I mean that works for me. I don't know if it works for uh, a lot of other people. I know there's there is chemical imbalances and stuff like that, uh, but um, that's that's what I use to uh, to be able to not get in because once you once I believe that once you're in it, it's it's tough to get out. You know what I mean? And uh, I I just don't want to get in it, so I I try to figure out a solution for it. And I think. I think these discussions are, are good to have because for me, like stress is normal. Everybody encounters stress, deals with stress. Anxiety is normal. It's it's the brain trying to protect you. The brain is trying to predict what's going to happen and say, hey, we need to be on high alert because this looks like something I've seen before where something bad can happen. So that's normal. Um, I think about anxiety disorder the same way I used to think about allergies. I used to make fun of people with allergies because I didn't have them. And it's like, oh, you got the sniffles? Like, oh, you, you really... You're doing all of this because you, you know, your nose is running. Like, chill out, brother. That's, that's that's normal. And then I moved to Texas, and they got cedar down here, and I had a real like allergy situation. I'm like, this is fucking miserable. Like, I I was apologizing to people, like, my bad. I did not know this is what you were going through. And it's like that. That's how I feel about anxiety disorder. Like when I when I am going through my periods of anxiety, the way I try to describe it to people is, I will be afraid because I can't remember what I'm supposed to be afraid of. Like, and that's crazy. And, and you're telling yourself that doesn't make sense. Like you don't even know if there's something you're actually supposed to be scared about right now, but you're scared that you think you forgot it. And that's like a loop that, like you said, Joe, is very difficult to get out of. Like, you know, how do I convince myself that I haven't forgotten something that's about to happen that's going to go crazy? Like, I, I, how do I do that? And um, and, so that, and that's that's a difference. Like that's it's not based on any logic. It's not based on anything happening or something that uh, that you could prevent. Um, I do agree with you, Joe. That like occupying 
your mind, you know, one of the things I learned, you really can't think about two things at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if you can find a way, you know, sometimes I do meditation and I do the, I forget what they call it, like the conscious meditation where you just sit in a room and try to pick out how many different sounds you can hear or what, what different smells you can pick up. And if you're focusing on the sound of traffic outside, you know, your brain really can't focus on that and the other thing at the same time. So you can kind of change the thought. But yeah, it it can be debilitating, like you said, to the where your your wife like freezes, like she mm-hmm. can't move, she can't act. You're so afraid of something that you don't even you can't put your finger on, but it can stop you from like functioning. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that's you know a place where like the medication and stuff comes in handy. And again, for me, it is the knowing. Like if you're feeling these things or you're experiencing these things, sometimes just knowing what it is that's really going on with you can help you process it. The fact that I know that when I'm in one of those states that it's completely irrational, there is nothing that I'm supposed to be afraid of. It's just what my mind for whatever chemical or psychological reason is doing right now, weather the storm, I'll be out of it. But when you don't know and you're in one of those spaces, like it's, I used to, I, I would drive myself crazy trying to figure out if I was crazy. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's one of those loops that you can just get in and never get out if you don't know what's happening to you. So I like, you know, the fact that Willie brought up, like he's feeling these things, not quite sure exactly why. So let's go talk to somebody and figure it out. Because I think for a lot of the stuff that we all go through, sometimes knowing what's going on with you can make a world of difference. But there's definitely a difference between anxiety, what we all experience as human beings, and like anxiety disorder. I think, you know, some people might need to understand that they don't understand. That if somebody is saying they can't do this thing because of their anxiety. They may be experiencing something that you've never felt before. And it's a, it's a whole different animal. I want to, uh, I do want to kind of talk about the stress management part. Like I'm, I, I kind of agree what Joe says, but that's also why I kind of brought up the depressing part because like when I get, I'm, I'm, as a worker, I tend to work better under stress. Like control, control stress, I can do that because I can figure it out what I need to do to get past that point to, to get you know to get the job done. So that's why I was saying, is it good to suppress? Because like I know I I have received some news recently. So went to work, I was fine. Then I started getting around coworkers and stupid shit. And you know, this you the coworkers, you know what I mean? So so then I start getting overwhelmed because I'm trying to focus on my job to get stuff done because I'm I'm good. I'm in my zone, but at the same time I have to deal with other other stress. So it was at the point I was like, you know what? I probably should have called in today because this is this wasn't a good environment for me to be in to process what I'm going through and what I'm trying to figure out right now. So I went to work the next day. It was the same thing. I was like, dude, yeah, I probably should have called in today too because I was in my mind. I'm hoping like, yeah, maybe yesterday was just that day. A new day. I'm going in, you know, try to be more positive about everything and not try not to let what I'm going through weigh me down. No, it was the same thing. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't giving myself a chance to process what I was going through. You know what I mean? So if I would have kept doing that, I probably would have ended up snapping at someone because that stress was building. You have, have, have y'all have, I mean, Joe, you seem like you, you live this phenomenal life. You have, you have nothing, nothing is wrong. I'm just joking though. But have y'all ever, have y'all ever been so stressful to where your body that's aching? Your back starts hurting. You start having these crazy headaches. You don't know where the headache comes. 
that's your body. That's you holding in that stress. You're not dealing with it. Yeah. You know, that's why I like I like to go for walks. You know, some people, uh, Big Brother likes to lift. You no, know, likes to lift heavy. But at the same time, you still hold on to that stress because it, you can be lifting 200 pounds, feeling good, wake up the next morning. Dude, why is my why can't it just be that one shoulder is bothering you? You know what I mean? That stress. So at some point, we have to learn how to deal with our stress. Have to we have to learn how to process it and understand it. That 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 that's my take on the stress management. Just to chime in real quick, where it's like where kind of like you were saying, I think you know a lot of people are always saying I work better under stress, and then it, as we're talking about, it, I'm like, do we work better under stress, or have we just learned, or have we adapted mm -hmm. to working? under stress and convinced ourselves we work better this way because we have adapted to it because, and this is just me, it seems as though everyone wants you to be okay, but they never give you a space to be okay. Okay. We understand what you're going through, but hurry up and go through it because we need you to be okay. So you can get back to the work, the life being there for everybody else. So, and that's why I think this is an important um, segment that we did stress management because like you said will when your body is aching when your head is hurting it's you trying to tell you i need something from you you know how to give everything to everybody else but now i need you to process this don't suppress this let's look at this stress and w when i really started reading up and learning of how stress really affects people's health i was like yeah we need to learn and put it out on the table Deal with your stress before your stress deals with you, whether it be, God forbid, death, medical issues, you know, and any other type of issue. So, yeah, that's the, that's where I'm at with it's like, yeah, we have to learn how to manage our stress and understand when someone is having an anxiety attack especially if they're if they don't realize it we have to help and guide each other through that whether you know and it just seems as though as men culturally racial wise it seems like we have to always bear everything and hurry up and be okay you know how they always say someone's like i'm stressed and that's so you're somebody or probably oh everyone's stressed no everyone isn't give give people a chance and some space to work through their stress and their anxiety. That's what I think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Physical activity is very important. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is uh, uh, jujitsu, right? And doing that for, you know, since 2017 or so. And uh, it's, it's about mental focus, right? And uh, you get tired to exhaustion, right? Cause you are trying to manipulate another man, trying to, both of you are trying to mani manipulate each other and you're exhausting your, you know, you're exhausting each other. And uh, martial arts is, is super good for, I believe things like this for anxiety and, and uh, depression uh, because it uh, not only that, but you bond, right. And you, you have, uh, you meet new people, you get to talk about different things and you're not just constantly worrying about the, the bad stuff, the depression or the anxiety. And, and you get to, uh, even though it's hard for some people, but you get to go outside the box. Right. And, and, uh, and be able to, like I said, talk to people and, and be exhausted, train, uh, uh, learn, you know, focus and all that kinds of things. So, yeah, you know, at physical activity for me is a big priority. If I didn't have, if I, my physical, if my physical activity drops, you know, I, I start feeling it. I'm like, all right, I need to start, I need to start getting up and start doing something. And so, yeah, but for some of these things, they're they're like, like Will I think was saying, some of these things can just purely be a chemical imbalance. And uh, I know for me, like with the bipolar stuff, like it's a it's a lack of serotonin, and you know, not having a certain a certain amount of serotonin, you know, certain your serotonin levels being too low, can prevent you from even having the motivation to go do something like uh, jujitsu or the physical activity. So it's, you know, for some, I think finding out what's going on with you 
and then coming up with a plan to address it. If you need to take the medication just to get you to a space where you can go start doing the physical activity and then eventually be able to taper off because you now have this physical activity that's, that's helping boost those serotonin levels. But some people need, yeah, I think these are all good strategies and, and not no one, you know, works sometimes on its own. Sometimes you might have to lean on one to get you to the other um, so that you can get through. But I think knowing sometimes, you know, would just help you plot that course. Jay Dot, I know a, I, I know you you you're not gonna change your diet <laughs> lifestyle, but you got a great book. Yeah, a great <laughs> book. As long as it don't involve me getting rid of bacon or Oreos, we might could talk about. It. Oh yeah, I forgot you. <laughs> I'm not No, but the book, the 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 brain fog that I was reading, I was I was reading it for she because she has female brain. But it was actually just talking about how we all generally have some type of brain fog because of the food that we're eating and not eating, and which is actually affecting our serotonin level and our melatonin level. That's all I was going to say. But I sent it to you. Uh, Much it's on Audible. I think it's free. I got a. Uh, before we move friend. on, I have a. Um, I wanted to let you guys know about this book that I read a while back. Um. It's called Inner Engineering, and I have it on, on my Audible. I had to look it up because I couldn't remember the name of it, but it's called Inner Engineering, A Yogi's Guide to Joy. It's that uh, uh, Indian guy, the Sat, Sat Guru, and mm-hmm. he talks about diet. He talks about mental stress. He talks about how your body is asking you for uh, to fast. Uh, you know, it tells you how to... Um, uh, to li- kind of uh, a guidance, right? And it, it's really good. It's it's a really good book. Um, this one's not free. This one was, you know, whatever, because I had the monthly thing that you pay for. Uh, and, but it, it, it's, huh? Free credit. Yeah. So it was a, it was a really good book. You know, uh, some people don't believe on, don't believe in some of this stuff that he uses, but I mean, he's been around for a long time and it was a, it was a really good, uh, not read, but I, you know, good listen. I'll check it out. I add it to my library of wish list. Uh, before we, uh, before I hand the mic over to Big Brother, I do want to ask y'all something. How has COVID nineteen affected y'all then and now? Because we're, we're it's, it's it's December. We're approaching the three year mark. So how has COVID-19 affect, how did it affect y'all then versus now? Go ahead. uh, Go ahead, brother. COVID-19, I have to admit, like, the day that everything was like, go home, shut down, I was just in a fog about it. I was like, wait a minute, I'm not understanding this. And then just recently, I watched a program that went back and, you know, was shot during that time. But the way it affected me then was it just really helped me prioritize what what my life is about, you know, what I was putting my energy and my time into because you had nothing but time. It helped me educate myself with the things I saw. But I had a relative who was up in age and they were in a nursing home at the time and I couldn't see her her whole that year and that was her last year of life so it was that was really hard on me and I actually you know took it pretty hard but with that being said the realization of how many people die with this thing it's just like over a million people are just gone and everyone is always oh we don't have this we don't have this you know, but I'm like, do you realize this is like a whole state just disappearing within like a year gone, just gone. How does it affect me now? I still wear a mask in crowded places because I, you know, I want to make sure that I don't catch it and pass it on to someone else. So if I, if I know I'm going to a place that's going to be crowded, I still wear a mask. So that's basically, you know, I'm still in that mode. And with it being cold and flu season and with this new variant of it, yeah, we still have to be on guard about it. Joe? 
Um, I don't want to be insensitive, but um, it's nothing. This business as usual had continued to work through COVID. We didn't. We never shut down. Uh, what I did, what I did is I did learn a lot on how we are as humans, how our country is, the decisions that other people take for us, and how easy it is to break a civilization, right? To break a country when something like this happens. Um, I it, it didn't stop me. It was like a normal day to me. I went to work the same way uh, after COVID. It was the same thing. I just, a lot of stuff was hard to get to. Toilet paper and uh, food and stuff like that. But other than that, um, I, I just learned a lot from it. You know, I learned from uh, reading a lot of stuff and w- listening to a lot of podcasts. And uh, just I just kept up with it. But it didn't affect me one bit at all. I mean, my company kept running, kept running. And uh, I just kept going to work just like, Every day, like normal, man. Everybody was at home, and uh, I was driving home, I was driving to work, driving home like like a regular day. It uh, we had to keep going, you know. We're in in the mining industry, and if there's no copper, there's none of that. Then nobody gets anything, you know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it was it was it was like a normal day. Just I did a lot, like I said, did a lot of learning on, you know, watching people. I remember I was at the store. See, a funny story here. I don't want to talk too long, but we went on vacation. We went to New York for a whole week when this whole thing started, when it was, like, getting crazy. I didn't even know, man. I came back. We came back from New York, and they're like, have you heard? Hey, everybody's getting COVID. What What the hell is COVID? I had no idea, and I wasn't. I was over there, man, the whole time, walking around, doing things, and I had no idea that this stuff was going was going around. Right. It was just it was really strange and people were freaking out. Right. Like you were over there where everybody had COVID. And I was like, oh, really? I'm like, I had, I had no idea. You know what I mean? But, you know, it's just it's strange. But, you know, but I learned a lot from it. So. Mm. But, you know, a lot of people were suffering. Obviously, you, you see all that and you're like, damn, you know, like this is crazy how this can just impact all of us and and uh, and tear us down. You know what I mean? And. Uh, learning experience. Straight up. Yeah, it was a. Uh, I experienced some of what you know what Joe was saying in terms of what I learned about like people. Um, I was very much still in the recovery community when COVID hit. I was living in sober homes, and so I'm living in houses where you know you have, you know, five to nine people, um, and you know, and COVID becomes a big deal you know, in those situations. And then when, you know, everything shut down, you know, I'm, I'm working from home for, you know, almost two years straight, not, not really leaving the house, uh, you know, meetings and things like that shut down for people who deal with substance uh, issues. We saw a lot of suicides, a lot of relapse um, in our community. Cause one of the things that, you know, addicts need more than anything is, is community and trying to do these things via zoom, you know, which is just not the same. Um, and then I started to see like people that I knew, like maybe not close friends, but people my age that died, you know, uh, because of COVID. And I started to see the arguments that we were having online about whether or not it was even real and, and this is going to happen. You know, the, the funny thing is to me, every time, you know, I, we, one of these things happen and people start saying, you know, this is going to happen. I remember when it first, when COVID first took off and I think they were saying like Tom Hanks or somebody had COVID and mm-hmm. I had a roommate. They were telling me, oh, no, this is just a smoke screen because they're going to uh, wrangle up all of these actors and Hollywood people that have been a part of this sex, child sex trafficking ring. Like that's the, in their mind, that's what was happening. This was just a cover story for getting rid of all of these devil worshiping sex traffickers in Hollywood. And nobody's ever come back and say I was wrong. Nobody's ever come back and, and said, you know, uh, no, that's not what happened. COVID was a real thing. They just moved on to the next, you know the next conspiracy theory that they believe is happening. It's not real. And so it, it just, I got to watch like all of those conversations and arguments and people taking extreme stances and the, and the anger and the, uh, the hatred we seem to, to have for each other. And the fact that people were just not willing to, uh, you know, participate in certain things that, that could possibly save lives. Yeah. You know, I'm very much of the mindset. 
And I tell this, you know, I'm in a leadership position at work. And sometimes I have to tell the guys at my job, this is coming from on high. I know it doesn't make sense. You know it doesn't make sense. But the best way to prove to them it doesn't make sense is to do exactly what they told us to do. And then when it fails, be able to say, we followed this by the word and it didn't work. Now let's try something different. But, you know, just watching two years of us not being able to do, you know, simple things that to me were not an invasion of your freedom, you know, not an invasion of your privacy. This is just something that may help. And if we do it and it doesn't work, we'll be able to say we did it and it didn't work. Now give us something else. But the fact that we just refuse to, for the most, in my mind, would seem like very selfish and self-centered reasons. Um, yeah, I, I learned a lot about people and it's just, you know, I don't think to, to say how it affects me now is like, I don't, it really doesn't feel like we recovered as a country, as a, as a, as a, as a people, we're more divided now, um, than I, I've ever experienced in my lifetime. And I saw a lot of that division grow during the, you know, the whole COVID thing. And then when you hear that it may be coming back, you're already, I'm already hearing the rhetoric and the arguments spin up again about what we're not going to do. And this is how we go. It's, you know, it, uh, it's a little upsetting sometimes, at, you know, how far people will go to maintain something that's, that's to me trivial when we're talking about lives. Like, you know, like big brother said, an entire city disappearing in a year. And, uh, if all it required was you putting something on your face to maybe mitigate some of that, like, you know, how is that an invasion of your freedom? Like, you know, I don't know. But yeah, that, that's, that's what it's done for me. Mm. I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat with Joe. I was essential. So we never shut down. So no feeding the kids would be home. No, Get, feeding the kids to be home doing school, I would still have to suit up every day, go to work. You know, then it was the whole coming home, basically strip butt naked, you know, in the front door, and you know, bring your clothes to the washing machine and all because we didn't you know nobody knew how it really work. You know, you know they say stay on your clothes for twelve to twenty four hours and all that stuff. So you know, about I know a month, I think I stripped. In the living room, you no know, butt naked, just you know, trying to get clothes. But TMI, Will TMI. I know, I know, I know. But th- th- this is why we're here. Uh, <laughs> but and I'm I'm sure I wasn't. There was plenty. There was plenty of people that was doing that. You know, they couldn't go. They you know people who the nurses and doctors. They wouldn't even dare step in step in their house with their work clothes on. You know what I mean? So. But it was something that was being that that was really happening. I actually, I thrived because I'm such an introvert. I just, you know, it 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 it, it was, and I don't want to be insensitive to everyone, people who lost lost one, lost a loved one, or whatnot. It was, I don't want to say it was the best time of my life, but I really, I I really did thrive because this thing about how many people that actually had to stay home that you didn't have to deal with. You know what I mean? Uh, just think about going to work. Well, there's only 10 of us. So really, I was just going to work a lot of days just to read books because I still had to be there to just, just just in case I'm using my air quotes, just in case a truck comes, we have to unload them. So there would be, there would be days I go to work, I unload one truck, (laughs) but I still had to go there because I was essential. So in that mass, in that mindset, I started thinking, I was like, damn, how much they really give a damn about us? When we know half the you know half the country and half the state is on lockdown, but yet we're still open, and maybe get one truck. Like how how important it is the value of life when you still have to come in. Like the only way that you did not work is if you took some type of disability off for COVID. <laughs> 
we had to go have a doctor's note. They had to have something written saying why you could not work. And then you still had to, had to figure out how to get unemployment. If your job even offered it. Because like my job, they, they didn't even offer the unemployment. You, you basically, it was basically like, like a laid off type type thing. Like you got laid off, but you wasn't getting paid. You would just be at home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So unless you had some type of a, a respiratory issue type thing, then you could, you could do the, uh, what, what is, what do they call that? Uh, that insurance. I can't think of what the, uh, it's like, uh, short-term disability, short-term dis. but that runs out. That's not, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's, I mean, it's literally was crumbs on the table because you had, you, you would have to return back to work within those two, three weeks. And it's hell by the time, by the time you come back to work, the check was just now coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but, yeah, I did, man. I I don't know. It it was like Thanos snapped his fingers and everybody was gone. Didn't have I didn't have no it wherever I needed to go, I had no issues. Other than going to the grocery store and having to deal with people being people. That was the wor- that was the worst spot for me. Just having to go to the stores. But I just found it crazy how what 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 did people do with all this damn toilet paper that they was hoarding? What's all you this know, town towel paper? That was like funny. attack it like I just in case we run out. Do you know what was funny? Because one, I, I always thought it was weird that like uh liquor stores were considered essential and uh, mm-hmm. and they stayed open. Yeah. But there were liquor stores here in Texas that would advertise like these bundles. Like you could get so many bottles, a loaf of bread, and a couple rolls of toilet paper. And you wow. could have that, that was like, you could get that as a part of your liquor order. So it was, mm. the liquor stores was buying up all the toilet paper. It's a That's beautiful thing. But <laughs> it was too- yeah, you do all that drinking, you're gonna need that toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be dehydrated. Mm. But yeah, I, I just kinda, I wanna ask y'all how, how I don't think as long as we've been kind of, we've been talking, we never really had that conversation. You know, about COVID-19. I mean, I think in a lot of ways, it's a hard conversation to have. Mm-hmm. And you really don't know what to say about it. Cause I don't know about sometimes some parts seem unreal and you can't believe you live through that. Mm-hmm. And then other parts are just like, shoot, I live through that. Because sometimes I, you know, I think about, you know, the people who tragically passed away from it, but then I move on and find myself thinking about the children that became orphans from it and, you know, find myself praying for those children who became orphans out of COVID because, you know, there were stories where some children lost both of their parents in this. So for me, I not dwelling on it, but you know, when I think of COVID, I do think of the people who we all were changed, but you know, for some reason, my heart and prayers go out to the people who became orphans, whether you are an adolescent or even adult people who lost both of their parents. So, you know, I just think of that because it happened so fast, you know, within a year, people were just like, bam, bam, one after another. And as soon as it seems like people will get admitted into the hospital and definitely when they got incubated, it sounded like they were, you know, just gone. I just remember a story of someone, I'm not sure if it was a man or a woman, went in for COVID and thankfully woke up, but had a full lung transplant. I'm like, can you imagine waking up and you have totally different lungs? Mm. So yeah, I just... But some a lot of times when I think about it, I find myself mindful and praying for those who lost their parents, both of their parents during that time, or the only family that they had. Yeah. So we we were just talking about on the last episode, like the worst case scenario, 
COVID-19 was the worst case scenario. Not not the, but it was a worst case because we really found out how organized we was individually as a unit, as a country, as a world. We found out how prepared we were to deal with something, even though we knew it was coming. Like we, we found out what December, January, we knew it was coming. By the time it hit April, March, and April, we was like, it's here. And we not ready. Uh, you know, and God forbid it flares up again. What have we learned? It, that's, that's the scary part, you know. That's what we're going to find out. We live in a in a community. Like, it, as much as we want to be individuals like this, by nature, we're, we're social beings and we live in a community. And sometimes you have to operate as a community. You have to, there are going to be times where you have to put individual liberties aside for the, the betterment of the group because you as an individual benefit from the group. And I, I think a lot of, you know, there was, I don't know, just the amount of anger and hatred I saw in some of these conversations about this stuff, about, you know, what people were unwilling to do for their fellow man, um, uh, it, it, it hurts and it still hurts because it, it's spinning up again. I see it already now. Mm -hmm. it's like, I, that's the part because I, I pretty much spent two years at home, which was crazy. You know, for a person suffering with, you know, depression and anxiety, looking at the same four walls every day for two years, you know, then I'm still I'm still trying to get used to having to leave the house every day. That's weird mm -hmm. for me. It's really weird for me having to go someplace and come back every day. Like I'm I'm looking at people like you do this every day. Like you actually leave, you go places, you get dressed every day. God damn, like it's, it's a lot. But yeah, I, I I don't know. I often I often weep for the the state of things right now. Like I just I I feel like Big Brother. Like I, at some point we got to see each other as as human beings and as. Yeah, not even brothers and sisters, just members of the same organism. Like this, it don't work by yourself. It don't work, you know, each man on the island. It's not how any of this shit works. And if we can't exactly. do for each other or consider each other when, when it's time to make crucial decisions like that, I, I don't know how this thing goes further. Let's uh, try to change gears just a little bit. <laughs> we, we, we ran over, just, we ran over, but. Big brother, um, why don't you go ahead and do your lead off, man? Yeah, I mean, all of it works into this segment right here. You know, is giving two weeks notice when you leave a job a thing of the past? You know, people who started working from home, some of them say, you know, that's the idea thing. You know, now people have reprioritized their life and, you know, stressful jobs and everything like that. So I like to... Throw it out there to to everyone. In your opinion, do you think giving two weeks notice when you leave a job is a thing of the past? And if you had the opportunity to leave your job for a better job, but they needed you to start before two weeks, would you leave without giving notice? So I'm going to start with Will. You know, it's funny. I just had this conversation last night where I've been like in this fucking mode for a while at work, there's a good chance I probably would. Depending on how big that lottery payout is. Yeah. I said it, a better it, job, not the lottery. No, I, I know, but I'm saying if, if I did that, that's the only way I would leave. If, if, if it really was a better job, but Let's think about this. Let's, let's say you had a job for 10, 15 years. So then you go find you that better job. What 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 would be that better job? Is it going to be because you're making more? Is it because people? Is it because it's a shorter commute? What 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 is the better job? 
which is true. You know, a lot of times it's financially, but sometimes it's more, it can be a combination of finance and being more fulfilling. You know, you, you can make more and leave, but you can make around the same what you're making and find it more fulfilling. So would you leave without two weeks notice? Oh yeah. Yes. I would. But I guess I guess like I said, I had this conversation last night with a friend. I'm kinda at a disgruntled point right now. So that's why that's why I was like, yeah, I I, I probably would. Uh what what is that thing where people quit and sound like sound like quitting? Yeah, quiet quitting. Just quiet, stop quiet. showing up. Yeah, yeah. Like for about two months I've I've been I've been in that mode. Oh, there's a dumpster fire. All right. <laughs> hey man, one of the trucks flipped over. Hey, walking shit off. I, that that's where I've been at. So yeah, but that's why I said, what 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 would be the better job? I'm not trying to answer your question with a question. I'm just saying, what would be the better job? Because we just talked about COVID. So you got um in my mind, how much do our employers really give a damn about us? True. You know, we essential. But how essential are we? Because there was people that was at home making way more money than I was and wasn't doing shit. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 sorry. I'm laughing. I'm, a lot of people were bad about that. But Joe, what about you? You quitting? Or are you giving two weeks? You found that job. That job found you. You know, you, it's fulfilling. You got some good money with it. No, nah, I'm, um, I'll give the two weeks. Um, but that job wants you to start before the two weeks. Are you giving two weeks? Yeah. Um, I, I feel that, uh, it also, it also depends on what your job is, right. And how long you've been there. Like Will said, it, it's uh, also depends on, on where you stand. Right. So, um, even if I was not okay with where I was at the time and place there, I think that it's the right thing to do. Uh, to give them an opportunity to, because I don't want to burn a bridge. Um, so I think it's the right thing to do to, hey, I'm out in two weeks. That gives you an opportunity to bring someone in. I can help you train them, get them ready, and I'll move on to my next job. Or at least I'm giving you a heads up so you can start looking for somebody else. And if the other place can't wait, then I'm not leaving. You know what I mean? Because uh, that's just the way it works. Um for me, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll, I'll give you my two weeks and I'll tell the other place, look, I got to give my two weeks. I uh, can't come to a low, to my two weeks. But now these days, you know what I mean? Now these days with this two weeks stuff, it's, uh, you give your two weeks and you get fired. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's, uh, Hey, and, and don't let them find out you going to a competitor. Yeah. Oh, that same, that the same moment you tell them. Don't just clear your desk off. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a box. Here. And, you know, and it also depends on your worth to the company, right? And uh, if they're willing to retain you. So that's the gamble, right? Put, put my two weeks in. How much worth am I to them? Are they going to go, all right, peace. You can, you can pack your shit and get out of here. Or, you know what? You're a good guy. We're going to retain you. So it's a gamble, man. It's a gamble that you got to take. You know what I mean? When you, as soon as you give your two weeks... Um, but I mean, that's why I do it. You know, if I, like I did it on my, this last time, you know, when I put in my two weeks and I thought they were just going to let me go, but I just kept going to work. Right. And there was nobody said nothing. So I just kept going to work. And then they're like, Hey, we want to, we want to offer you a different position. We want you to stay. So it, it worked out. Right. Cause it was, it was what I wanted to do, but it's, uh, I, I still believe in that. I still believe in, in, given that but like i said the employers don't give a shit some of them don't give a shit they, they'll just they'll just can you right there in the spot that's why some people are afraid to give their two weeks that's why some people just quit they'll just work till they have to start because they're afraid that they're gonna get they're gonna get fired and then they still have two weeks to go and they won't have a paycheck 
think I think some of those are the people who really ain't that good anyways. Like they really want good their job. So it's like they 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 think they work in the system, but it was like, now nah, we just waiting on you to quit, so we ain't gotta give you an employment. Yeah, that's also true. Let them quit by themselves. Yeah. Yep. Jay, that is on you. You give me your two weeks. Uh, I, I I think it, it depends on the industry and, and you know and what it is you do, and like you said, your your value. Um, I do say that if COVID taught us anything, is is fuck these companies because they don't they don't really care about you and and you have to. Most of us are like light bulbs to these people. They're gonna work you till you burn out, and then they're gonna replace you with another one. Like they, the company's not gonna if you drop dead on the job, they're not closing. You know, they're not they're not taking a day off. They're going to get the paramedics to come grab you up out of there and then start interviewing for your replacement. So, you know, you have to, you have to do what's best for you because that's exactly what they're going to do. So, but, but what's best for me in most of the situations is because of the industry I work in is I work in IT and you're going to run into somebody somewhere down the line is to always leave on a good note. So I try to put that two weeks in just so there's no hard feelings. I'm, I'm, I'm going to run into somebody here, somebody else and their opinion of me or how we work together in the past may weigh in on, on what opportunities I get in the future. So I have to think about it that way, but that's me doing what's in my best interest, not giving two weeks out of some false sense of loyalty to a company or an organization. Cause they're only as loyal to you as you are beneficial to them. So we should feel, you know, sort of the same way. But if, yeah, if a job offered me a position and it depends on the position, it depends on the position and the money. You know, I would definitely try to negotiate something. Hey, are you comfortable with me working both or doing some part time over here or helping out a little bit, you know, still being able to answer questions or still being able to do whatever to help them out during that time period? I try to negotiate something but for the right price. I'm out of there. You know, if I got to do what's best for me, my family, my future, y'all will get on. Y'all will be just fine without me. You might have a hiccup or something for a little bit until you find somebody else. But I'm sure y'all not closing the doors because I left. So I'm gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, that, and that's the reason I wanted to present this to everyone, just so everyone was kind of on the same accord. Was like, you got to figure out what's best for you because times have changed. COVID has taught us a lot of businesses are not really investing in their employees long term to the point where, you know, they're trying to retain you till you burn out. But for me, I think COVID taught me that you have to do what's best for you. And I'm not really 100%, and this is just for me, in line with two weeks notice anymore. I'm, I, I, I've seen how I've heard some very dirty stories and they're not going to give you two weeks if, if they fire you. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to give you two weeks if they lay you off. So not saying walk out or quietly quit or, you know, but do what's best for you. Weigh your options and understand sometimes even if you have good intentions, a person of integrity, you've served this company well. Even if you give two weeks, they might look at it as burning a bridge because they might want 30 days. So that's why I say. I'm not 100% on two weeks notice anymore. You got to figure out what's best for you and do it with integrity. Yeah. How about if the company actually, if the companies actually did that, what do you guys think about that? If they're like, Hey, you got two weeks and then we need you out of here. Think about that. It was backwards. If it was the other way around and they'll just go up to you and be like, will when they fired you? No, just be like, J dot will you got two weeks, man. You guys are done in two weeks. You need to find mm. another job. Which, mm. I mean, when I when I got laid off, that was the situation. It wasn't you got to leave today. It's, this is the date that's going to be your last day. And we're letting you know now. Here's your severance package or whatever. I mean, and I appreciated that. If I got the opportunity to work for them again and it was the right thing, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have an issue going back. I understand why they did what they did. They treated us well on the way out. And, uh, you know, and I, so I think that's the same way when we... When you give your two weeks, it's not out of sense of loyalty to the company. You're not trying to hurt somebody's feeling. It's like you said, like not burning the bridge, trying to, on the way out, I'm going to leave on a positive note so that if I ever need any of you again for a recommendation, if I want to come back here, if I run into you someplace else, that, you know, 
I maintain those relationships. So if a company was willing to do that for me to try to maintain a relationship, I'd appreciate it. I don't. I, I'm like I said, I'm disgruntled. I don't really have. <laughs> I don't. I didn't know people would even and and in, in my in work environment. You can't tell you the last time I see somebody even put in a two weeks notice because we are uh, uh, almost half of our workforce is temps. Work, work, work today, get paid today. So whenever that's a new person, all right, whatever. I don't care because that ain't no guarantee. They come, they might not even come back from lunch. You know what I'm saying? That that's how we we run through temps. <laughs> they they just I Johnny. mean it, it Y'all seen Johnny? Yeah. Ain't yeah. Gonna be able to... <laughs> like, like like yeah, we we we've had a few like that during the pandemic. You guys see such and such where he went he went on the fifteen his his first fifteen minute break. That's one thirty. They still looking for him. First break was at nine. But yeah, what are y'all he's gone. He's not coming back. What are y'all doing? Anyways, uh, good conversation, y'all. Good show. Another great show. I don't know what happened, but for some reason, my internet, like, blinked. So it might be, like, 10 seconds that we might not. It might didn't. It might probably didn't catch. I don't know. Maybe maybe we just maybe we just got on somebody's list. Maybe that was them tapping in. Hey, you talking about all them aliens and stuff. I tried to tell you, Will. I've been trying to warn you oh, about these things. Talking about the aliens, I was just, mm-hmm. you know, I was giving him a Joe name. Pill, Joe peel his face off and reveal that he's one yeah. of them. Yeah, that I'm Joe Biden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big Brother is literally watching. <laughs> hey, it's like that guy that uh, invented uh, that that could run the car with with water, and then. Uh, they yeah. disappeared. I, think I ass. heard that story. Yeah. I, think I heard that story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They, 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 they sabotaged that man for real. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, let's go ahead and wrap it up. And want y'all let them know where they can find you. Go ahead, J Dot. Yep. Host of the uh, What Is TWS podcast. New episodes every Monday. Wherever you find your dope podcast, and then also on Opulence Radio. Got a couple shows. Uh, I know that my. Solo show, the Kiss the Sky Hour, or the Kiss the Sky Two Hours now. It's Fridays at 8 p.m. OpulenceRadio.com or download the app from your preferred app store. But check it out. Yo. Yeah, I'm Joe, uh, the host of Bull Talk by Joe podcast, uh, society and culture podcast. Uh, you can listen to me on uh, any platform, YouTube, Spotify, all that stuff. Um, there's a lot of new stuff coming up, so... Uh, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the League of Kings podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe to all of our podcasts. Think about us podcast. What is the What is TWS podcast? Big Brother Vice podcast. Um, stay tuned, brother. And I am the resident Big Brother host of Big Brother Vice podcast. Motivational encouragement, self help, uplifting. So you can find new episodes premiering on Thursdays, and you can find it on all streaming services joe's already told my ass i'm not i'm not doing it <laughs> i'm just playing i'm just playing you I'm, just I'm, disgruntled <laughs> you just give me your two weeks notice willie yeah. i won't I'll be aggressive i know i've been aggressive the last few episodes so i, I, I think joe did that <laughs> i'm willie from the thing about us podcast and i that i host with my beautiful wife fiana well, we talk about all the beautiful things about relationships and the do's and don'ts and ups and downs and the left and rights and everything in the middle. So please follow, subscribe, listen on all streaming platforms. And again, my name is Willie. We appreciate you turning in to the League of Kings podcast. Stay connected between episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Good Pods. For extra content, find us on YouTube at The League of Kings Podcast and on TikTok at The League of Kings Podcast. Until next time, 
Keep exploring society and culture with us.